House Republicans are holding a closed-door candidate forum this afternoon, where they'll hear from two candidates for the speaker's race. Lawmakers will vote by secret ballot to select their nominee tomorrow morning. Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan and Louisiana Congressman Steve Scalise remain the top candidates for the job. According to Fox News, 47 Republicans are publicly backing Jim Jordan, while 23 are publicly backing Steve Scalise. Joining me right now is Louisiana Congressman. He is the House Majority Leader, Steve Scalise. Leader Scalise, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. Great being back with you, Maria. Good morning. Well, Congratulations on this race and your pursuit. I want to get your take on what this horrific war in the Middle East means. Uh, the emergency spending package for Israel that is being talked about, how much has this war expedited the need for a speaker, would you say? You can see the resolve. We do not have time to waste, Maria. The world's a dangerous place, and it's gotten more dangerous. We need to move fast. We need to get this done. And we need to get back to work. Uh, obviously, I've been working with Chairman McCall and others. We have a strong resolution in support of Israel ready to go. Uh, we need to get back on track to express that strong support for Israel, but also to move to make sure they have everything they need to defend themselves. Uh, this war is ongoing. Uh, there's not just Israelis. There are Americans that are dead, uh, possibly held hostage, too, working on getting those assessments continued. But this isn't over. This is continuing. We need to be standing with them. We need to get back to work as a Congress. And that's the resolve of our members. Those are the conversations I've been having. We're going to continue to have them. We're going to resolve this Wednesday. So would you endorse an emergency spending package for Israel right now, then? Look, we're having those conversations. I've talked to Ambassador Dermer. Uh, we're talking internally. Uh, we're having a lot of conversations. But again, we, uh, we've got to get back on track. We have to have a function in Congress. And we've got to do it tomorrow. Uh, you know, this is something we've got to do quickly. Our members are ready to go. Uh, those are the conversations we're having. But uh, we need to come together quickly. We've got to do it. We've got to get back to work. Uh, there are a lot of things to do, clearly, with Israel. It just reminds everybody the world's going to keep turning, and there are bad people trying to take advantage of weakness that they see. We cannot, here in the United yeah. States Congress, be giving into that weakness. We need to be strong. Yeah. We need to get back on track and do our job. I understand. So what about the money to Ukraine, Congressman? The White House is requesting an additional $24 billion after sending $113 billion to Ukraine. We know that 117 House Republicans already voted against spending uh, and sending more money to Ukraine. Is this something that you would endorse, sending money or not? Maria, I've been very clear. We have to secure America's border. We have sent legislation to the president, over to the Senate. Uh, the Senate doesn't want to take any of this up. The president hasn't want to confront this problem. It's not just a Republican issue. Democrat mayors are telling the president he has to secure America's border. And so we are going to have a conversation under Speaker Steve Scalise about securing America's border and what we've got to do uh, to put in place real policies. We've passed strong policies, not just in legislation, uh, also in funding that we've sent over to the Senate. Uh, I'm going to be engaging in those direct negotiations my first day as Speaker. But we've got to secure America's border. We've got to help our allies like Israel. Uh, but look, there are a lot of things that are at stake. There are a lot of things we've got to get back to work doing. But we've got to start it right now. Well, what are the main points that you're going to be making in this speaker forum? What do you want your members to know and, and, and the reason that you feel you should take the job? Well, Maria, I've got a long history of bringing people together, uniting Republicans, focusing on the issues that we've got to do to address the things we came here to do to get our country back on track. You know, we've, we have internal fights. I, I know the, the press loves it, focusing on those internal fights, but there's also bigger issues that we've got to be dealing with. And frankly, we've done a lot of those big things that get lost in the shuffle. Let's get back to addressing smart energy policy, smart border policy, getting spending under control, focusing on inflation, fighting for the families that sent us here in a majority to confront those problems, because they're still struggling. Those problems still don't go away. I've had a history of building coalitions, uniting people to focus on getting those things done, getting Congress working again, and doing it quickly. We don't have time to waste. I'm ready to go with a great team in place to move fast and uniting people from all factions of our conference. Do, do you have ideas in terms of getting the numbers down? You've got now 39 days left to get the remaining appropriations bills uh, passed. Uh, will you be able to do it, and at what price? Yeah, and I want to get right back to work on the appropriations bills. We had passed 
three of those right before everything happened with the speaker's race. And now let's get back to moving more appropriations bills. Uh, we had a few teed up ready to go. We are over 70 percent of funding of government out of the House. Senate hasn't done zero. We're going right. to be in the 80s when I'm finished my first week as speaker. Uh, the members are ready to get back to that work. Uh, let's keep passing all of the appropriations bills. By the way, that's something you haven't seen Congress do in a long time. And I think we need to get back to that as a normal process, not a unique yeah. time uh, where Congress is actually appropriating bill by bill, not in big packages, no omnibuses, no midnight hour deals, all these yeah. shot clocks and deadlines that get missed. Let's get back to doing our work on a normal process. Uh, but we're going to get back to that day one as well when I'm elected speaker. Well, I understand, but the truth is, is with all due respect, Congressman, you're not answering any questions. Do you endorse sending money to Israel in an emergency package? Do you endorse sending the $24 billion that President Biden is asking to Ukraine? Are you going to manage Maria, these bills Maria, in a I lower just told number? You, as you asked me, I just told you, I spoke with Ambassador Dermer yesterday about very specific things that Israel needs. Some, by the way, are in the what's called the SOPS bill state foreign ops bill that we just passed out of the House, the defense appropriations bill that we just passed out of the House. That's real money in pieces of legislation we passed out of the House, ready to go. Iron Dome funding, mm -hmm. munitions, real things that we've been talking okay. about. And obviously, we need to talk about even more specific things. You want to get into details, I'll get into details with you. But Congress can't do any of that while we're not functioning without a speaker. We need to get a speaker. I've been having those conversations in detail. But we need a speaker to make that happen. We have legislation ready to go to make that happen. We've got to get this done as members of Congress. We've got to do it Wednesday.